search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough And you came along Put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you, Lord There's nothing Better than you, Lord There's nothing Nothing is better The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Church, sing it, you know it. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for upset. You turn shame into glory.
Good morning. Welcome, gathering family. I'm so glad that you're here with us virtually in worship. I should say good morning or good afternoon or good evening, whatever day it is. It is a day that God is with you wherever you are. I know that worship is not just a feeling, it is more than a feeling. And yet, I have to be honest and say, I miss the feeling of worshiping next to you physically. Um, I just think back of, you know, I'm here in Car Hall, but of being here and maybe going on stage to welcome everyone. But when we sing and when we worship collectively, I feel your prayers, I feel your worship almost holding me up and helping me move into worship. So just know if you're missing that connection of other person's songs and prayers, um, know that I feel that too. And yet I want to say that during this time while we're still apart, God is still with us wherever we are. And may God's Spirit hold us up and usher us into a time and a place of worship as we worship today. It is still January. It feels like a new year with new possibilities. And I'm excited about starting this new year and seeing the good things that God has for us, for the gathering, and for the whole world. Thank you for being with us. Let us worship God together. There's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise Pushing back when the darkest weapons form There's power on my lips Even death can't defy When the name of our God is lifted high Cause there is resurrection power When we sing the name Jesus' resurrection, when we raise a mighty sound, come on, let the praise get loud, make that empty grave resound, there is resurrection power in his name. There are days I have seen, filled with heartache and loss, they are buried my heart beneath their weight but every time his praise breaks out that things rise up from the ground i won't leave my song inside that empty
Jesus, as we pray together today, I'm going to be praying or leading our prayer from Psalm 29, which is the psalm of the day that accompanies the gospel text that Pastor Will will preach from. So let us lift our hearts in prayer as we pray through Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. O oh God, we do worship you today and we ascribe or give unto you glory and praise. You and you alone are worthy of our best time and thought and attention and affection. God, we thank you for the gift of prayer that in these moments we can come before you and know that you hear us and know that you are with us, and know that by your Holy Spirit, you're even within us. So, O oh God, as we sit in this moment of prayer, we ask that your Holy Spirit will stir in us, bring to mind people whom we know and love who need your help, your grace, your strength. We lift those people up to you in the silence of our hearts and our prayer now. God, we also lift up our world. We look to you as our hope for ourselves, but also for this world. We thank you for coming for the whole world, for loving the whole world. And God, we ask that you would help us too, to be persons who live in the world by living a way of love, living a Jesus life of love. So will you, O oh God, work in us and through us and transform us that in small ways and big ways, we might be people who show your grace. We ask that you work in our own lives wherever there are strongholds of addiction or habits of sin that keep us from you. God, we want your grace. We desire newness in this new season, in this new year. We pray that whatever has held us back in the past will be broken in the power and the name of Jesus. That we will feel and know freedom spiritually. That we will know in intimacy with you, Christ, that you will hold us each and every day as we continue to go about lives without being close to others physically or maybe being too close physically with the same people all the time Whatever it is, God, in different ways, we desire intimacy with you. We desire grace that our words and our actions might be pleasing to you, but also would be like rain of grace <clears throat> and love in this world. So help us to live as your children. Help us to put our hope and our trust not in ourselves, in our goals or our resolutions, but help us to put ourselves right into your grace, trusting in you, that you are making something beautiful of us. Wherever there is messiness and brokenness, we invite you to work, to bless, to heal. And Lord, will you strengthen us that we would be people who would live out your mission of justice, that we would be persons of kindness and gentleness and love and self-control. God, we ask that you hear us now as we pray the prayer you taught Jesus to pray as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we continue our worship, I want to invite you now to give your tithes and your offering to the church that God might be about God's purposes in our church and through our church, that we would be a beacon of light and hope and love in Raleigh and beyond. And when we ask for your money during this offering time, it's really not only money that we're after. Collectively, brothers and sisters, we want all of our lives to be an offering to God. 
And so I have two opportunities to share with you right now that are other offering opportunities, ways you can give yourself to God and ask for God to transform you so that 2021, you might be more and more like Jesus even than you were in 2020. The first opportunity is Financial Peace University. If you're someone who struggles wondering about money and how to deal with it and feeling like there's never quite enough or feeling guilty with the ways that you use money or worried about the future, really, <laughs> that's probably most of us. There is a class that we will be offering called Financial Peace University. It's led by Carl Hoverstad, who is a member here in the gathering. It will be virtual on Wednesday nights at 7.30. It starts this coming Wednesday, January 13th. You can sign up and learn more in the gathering newsletter. But I hope that if you are, are looking for more financial freedom in your life, that you'll check that out and join that class. And the second opportunity has to do with our ongoing anti-racist journey as we live into our baptismal vows more and more. I wanna invite you to join me and the rest of the staff of our church and many of us in the church for the REI Racial Equity. There's a three hour virtual introduction to help us learn about how racism is a systemic problem. And so I hope you'll join in on that. Same thing, the details are in the newsletter with the gathering, but it's going to happen on Sunday afternoon um, at one o'clock and that's January 24th. So join us for that. And now let's hear a good word from God and from Pastor Will. Epiphany. That's not a word I grew up using in my own life or even in the church tradition in which I was raised. But epiphany is a word that is essential to our understanding what it means to be Christ followers in the here and now. Malcolm Geith, the British poet and preacher, says that epiphanies are those moments when God's eternal character is shown in our time and space and reels us into a reality grander than ourselves. Epiphanies are, are not like pictures that we can easily capture and codify and understand. Epiphanies are mysterious and truly, they reel us into something greater than ourselves. They show us who God is. And as a result of showing us who God is, we are then to realign our priorities and restructure our lives. This morning, you'll hear a message that was recorded on the morning of Epiphany for the first Sunday of Epiphany, the baptism of the Lord Sunday. It was recorded before the assault on the United States Capitol by a domestic terrorist. Uh, throughout the day on Wednesday, I was on social media and following the news. And I kept hearing a common refrain of people saying, this is not who we are. This is not who we are as the United States. Uh, friends, I think there's a, a deep and beautiful truth. There's a deep and painful truth. There's a deep and transforming truth. And taking some of the images you're seeing right now and recognizing that these are epiphanies. These are showings of who we've become. Only when we name that truth, only when we recognize where we are and how bad it is, can we actually allow the transforming grace of God to renew us, to call us into the life that is really life, to bring to death the idols that we claim and name as the way of truth. For truly friends, as you will hear in the message this day today, the life of Jesus, the life of those who are baptized in the name of Christ, is a life of humility yoked with the life of authority, gospel kingdom authority. So friends, as you hear the message this morning, uh, might you remember your baptism and in these strange and troubled times, keep it holy. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the throng of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven and said, you are my son, the beloved one. 
With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, would you take these rather ordinary words of mine and flame them by the power of your Holy Spirit that we might revisit this great epiphany of the Lord's baptism and be reminded of the power of our own baptisms that dying and being raised up with Christ we may wear the mark of his victory in everything we say and do as his disciples. All this we ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I got the opportunity to safely travel home uh, to see my parents in Little Rock, Arkansas for Christmas. And as a result of that, uh, we had the opportunity to go on a 13-hour car drive, which means we filled that time with all sorts of podcasts, uh, one of which really left an impression on me. It was a podcast between two powerful people. Brene Brown is a Christian author and speaker. She's built a platform, uh, really, that's been built around her research with resilience and shame and courage and belonging and community. The other person was Barack Obama, the former president of the United States, who for eight years was the most powerful person on earth. And in that podcast, they were exploring the power of paradox, the unique ability to hold two seemingly contradictory truths in tension to discover a deeper truth. So for Bernadine Brown, all of her life and research was devoted to very private matters, shame, personal resilience, and belonging. And yet she's realized the greatest power in sharing her research on the greatest and most public of platforms, TED Talks. Likewise, Barack Obama in that interview talks about how he was best at being president when he was being a good dad. Uh, the tension of being a president where every single second of your day is accounted for. Uh, the, the day doesn't have enough hours to do the work that it demands and yet he found that he was a better president, a better decision maker, when Michelle would remind him to be a more present father, a more present husband. The power of paradox, holding two seemingly contradictory truths in tension for the sake of discovering and living a deeper truth. Our epiphany this morning is framed in paradox. Jesus' baptism of the Holy Spirit is to be greater than John's baptism of repentance, and yet Jesus is the one who humbles himself to be baptized by John. Jesus is the eternally beloved and spirit-filled Son of the Father, and yet he is the normal Nazarene who is soaked up in the rather dirty and ordinary waters of the River Jordan on a rather ordinary day. It seems that this epiphany, this manifestation, this showing of who God is, is written with contradictory truths. Your reality right now, in January 2021, is likely filled with paradox. You're excited to get back to work, uh, to feel a sense of purpose in your day, and yet you could have used a month-long holiday. You love the people that you are spending all your quarantine hours alongside, and yet you could use a week-long silent retreat somewhere far away where no one else knows where you are. You are excited about all of the potential that 2021 will bring, the long hope for a return to communal gatherings, and yet 2021 still feels a lot like 2020. You can see God alive and at work everywhere in the midst of this current mess, and you wonder where on earth God could be. And just as our own ordinary lives can get out of rhythm and be off kilter, when we err too far to the either or of the tensions in our life. So many of the great heresies have been born through the church and those outside the church. When we have tried to compartmentalize aspects of Jesus's life into either or neat, easily understandable categories that allow us to control and understand God. Whereas orthodoxy, right believing, the doctrine of the church has always called us to sit into the wildness and the wonder of seeing Jesus as the great both and. Because this epiphany in Mark's gospel 
is the first of three epiphanies in that gospel that reveal that Jesus is one of both humility and incredible exaltation. Jesus, at the the waters of baptism, is the servant who enters into the suffering of Israel and is also the Messiah who has the Savior, who has the power to redeem his people. At the mountaintop of transfiguration, that second epiphany in Mark's gospel, Jesus is the pinnacle of all the law and prophets. And yet the healer who must leave the mountaintop to go heal the sick and the needy. And of course, at the cross of Golgotha, we get the epiphany that is recognized by the Roman centurion, that person outside the covenant of God who is yet able to claim the paradox that this man on the cross is both convicted and crucified criminal and son of God, king of all creation. This morning, as the church calls us to reflect on the epiphany of Jesus, it calls us also to rem- uh, the baptism of Jesus, it calls us also to remember our own baptisms, to remember uh, through this epiphany of Jesus that we are reeled by our baptisms into the reality of discipleship, of living in between the paradox of gospel humility and kingdom exaltation as it takes on flesh in our everyday ordinary lives. In her wonderful book, uh, Reverend Tish Harrison Warren, uh, the wonderful book, Liturgy of the Ordinary, she writes just this amazing, amazing way of us reflecting on what it means to remember our baptism. She says that when we remember our baptisms, we're not to go back into our log of memories to go watch a video of what it was like when we were baptized under the waters because hardly, many of us uh, can hardly even remember that. Instead, she calls us as we remember our baptisms to remember that we are marked. Remember your baptism and remembering that you are marked. When you wake up and you begin your daily liturgy of brushing your teeth and you look in the mirror and you don't look that great, remember you are marked. As you wake up the kids and try to get them ready for virtual school or in the days to come, get them ready to go to carpool, remember you are marked. As you commute through traffic and you get cut off and you're tempted to say dirty things and to curse the person who cut you off, remember you are marked. As you sit down and you work through tension with employees or you feel this sudden surge of creativity at work, you are, remember you are marked. As you sit down at the end of the day, depleted, exhausted, and yet you still have more to do, remember you are marked. Remember you are marked in all the liturgies of ordinary life. You are marked with gospel humility. That the most important self you can put on for any ordinary day, the most important title you could put on for yourself is the title, is the identity that is hidden in Christ the title of being beloved by God. This is the daily commitment to lose ourselves. This is the daily commitment to respond to the call to take up the cross. You are marked. Remember, you are marked with kingdom exaltation. That the Holy Spirit has gifted you with gifts of healing and gifts of words of of prophecy and of belonging and of blessing that the Holy Spirit has gifted you to resist evil and injustice and oppression and sin, that the Holy Spirit has gifted you to break down barriers between people and to build beloved community, to preach good news to the poor. The Holy Spirit has gifted you and so you are marked. And this is the daily commitment. This is the daily commitment to further discover the gifts God has given you and to dedicate them to the mission of God as it is birthed in the church through the world. Friends, you are marked. If you are baptized in Jesus Christ, you are marked in the great paradox of living in the tension of gospel humility and kingdom exaltation. You are a sinner in need of saving, and you are saints on the journey toward perfection. You are on the way of the cross in the sure and certain hope of resurrection. And so this morning, I invite you into an incredibly tangible practice of remembering that you are marked. 
It's the practice of the daily shower. I would imagine that each and every one of us takes a shower in your almost every day. My grandfather always had this joke that he said that he took a shower once or twice a year. You never really knew it was a joke, but you kind of hoped it was. And if you're one of those persons, uh, might you make it a resolution in 2021 to take a daily shower, not only for your own hygiene, but also for this daily grace. I wanna invite you into the practice, the ritual of the daily shower. We'll be sharing in our social media pages uh, as well as we will be sharing with those of you who are members of this church in the mail, a blessing that you can put in your shower. This is the blessing that we pray over the waters of baptism whenever we pray for any candidate who is receiving the sacrament. I invite you every morning as you take a shower to pray that prayer of epiclesis, that summoning of the Holy Spirit to bless the waters. And I also invite you to take a moment to claim your most true identity. In the nakedness of that moment, to not hide behind a fig leaf or false self. And instead, in the nakedness of that moment, to claim your truest identity, that you are beloved by God. Further, I invite you in that moment to commit to what you will do that day what spirit-given gifts you will tangibly use that day to bless others and to bless the world. Take a moment to claim who you are. Take a moment to commit to what you will do. Take a moment to remember your baptism and amidst all the twists and turns of the day, keep it holy. In response to the good news of Jesus Christ, friends, I invite you to pray with me. Good and gracious God, we are so grateful on this baptism of the Lord Sunday for the epiphany of Christ's humility and exaltation. The Savior, O oh God, who would suffer, who would bear the curse of his kingship, and yet, O oh God, would hold all the authority and all of heaven and earth and would use it not to destroy, but to bring life, not to divide, but to bring together. Not, O oh God, to build up his own name, but to lay down everything to bring many sons and daughters into his glory. Good and gracious God, we know that you look upon the state of affairs in the United States, and just as your son weeped over Jerusalem, so you weep. You weep, God, over the greed that blinds us to the values that are the core of what it means to be Christ followers. You weep at our blindness and our fear of naming and casting out the demon of racism and white supremacy. You weep, O oh God, when you see how those in power <laughs> cling to it and are so deeply afraid of those who would challenge them. God, as we recognize these dark and troubled times and truthfully name them to you, I pray God that you would make more clear to us, whether it be through the daily ritual of a morning shower, the reading of the news, or negotiating the twists and turns of ordinary life, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would make us ever more aware of our marks of gospel humility and kingdom authority and exaltation, that in the humility of naming uh, that we are nothing without Jesus, that the way of the cross is the way of the life, that we would put to death the idols that are reigning over our hearts in destroying the very fabric of our nation. And God, that you would give us the kingdom exaltation, the power of the Holy Spirit to witness to the name of Jesus and the name of Jesus alone, to be those, God, who cast out and exercise the demons, that, God, we would be those who seek healing from the ravages of racism and greed, those who are generous with our gifts, those, O oh God, who break down walls of division, and bring beloved community 
that we, O oh God, would be peacemakers in a violent and troubled world. O oh God, on this first Sunday of the season of Epiphany, might you call us to ground ourselves in our baptisms and to share with the world the good news and life of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fear thou still, when striving cease, my comforter. of Christ I stand. You are marked with gospel humility. You are marked with kingdom exaltation. You are marked in such a way that dying 
and being raised with Christ through the waters of baptism. You might share in his final victory in the midst of all the challenges of ordinary life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.